Like I always say, a good teacher doesn't tell you new things. A good teacher tells you things that you already know that are deeply inside of you and all we do is shed light and enlighten that place and you say, wow, I always knew that that was true. Welcome to Date with Danu, right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Today on the show, I'm happy to have a very interesting and an insightful show. A show that I've been trying to do for quite some time and timing has been a problem. Now, this has been one of the most requested show as well by you. So I'm happy that it's actually taking shape today. Let's speak about the WOW Church together with Kirby and Pia. I'm Kirby Delanerol and I'm here for Date with Danu and uh, as some of you know I'm a co-founder of WOW Life Church and WOW the global movement and uh, I'm all about reform, re reform of the church, reform of religion and uh, I'm also what I like to do is I love the mystical, I love to go deep into understanding the different dynamics of the mystical in every tradition not just Christianity. I also love neurobiology and psychology and mind over matter and I hope we can discuss this today. I'm Fiona Vijay Dilanarol and I'm the co-founder of Wildlife Church and the Warehouse Project amongst lots of other things and I'm here on a date with Danu. Well, I think uh, from the little I know of Danu and the uh, little I've spoken to uh, him, I think the show is going to be awesome and I think he, he dwells into uh, deeper subjects than one would think and I hope to go there today. I've watched uh, a, a few of uh, these episodes and I've enjoyed them very much. Some of them have been people I know quite well and I love watching how Danu uh, weaves them through and puts them on the spot. Um, so I'm looking forward to today. I don't know what it's going to turn out to be but I hope it's a decision I l don't live to regret. Danu, I like him because he's witty and uh, uh, really, there is, he's got, he, he has a capacity uh, to touch on things that others can't and that's what I like about him. Uh, and so let's hope we we'll go there. Danu, um, well he seems a very interesting, uh, funny, witty uh, person. Uh, I feel he goes quite deep. I love his storytelling and is someone I would definitely like to get to know a little bit more. Big with Danu, Naked Truth Edition. We are going to have an insightful conversation. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Bye. Because of the Naked Truth part. Yeah, I'm like, Naked Truth. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, We're glad to be here. <laughs> Happy to have you guys. Uh, back, to you. E back to Eden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> I better cover up more. Then. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to ask you, uh, so WOW Church was initially here at the Cinnamon Grand. Everyone used to come here. Yes. So, but, yes, so in, yeah. Initially, it was at the warehouse project. Right. And uh, we actually uh, got a beautiful 15,000 square foot space that we did up. And uh, really, Danu, at that point of time, we lost it in a day. You know, it was taken away from us. Uh, and we'll discuss it. Hope we'll go there. It's about uh, the fundamental rights of free churches. And we didn't have the ability to keep that uh, place as a worship center right. because of licensing issues at that time. And so they could close it down in a day and we lost that church. Uh, so because of that, they said because the uh, minority rights and the minority the Christian rights at that time were severely pressured. And so they wanted us to uh, sort of move into some uh, safe space. And so a hotel was the safe space. Right. And so therefore, we initially had it at the Simon Grand and we thought we could uh, have a good run here, which we did, I think, you know, yeah, we, we did, did about two, two years? No, more longer than that. Two, two or three we, years, yeah. till we were, anyway out, we were anyway outgrowing the room, I must tell you. Right. So the mainline churches that really attacked us and pressured probably even the, uh, maybe uh, the people who uh, at that point of time were giving us 
permission mm. to have our church here. Uh, we got pressured, unfortunately, right. because, and this is very important to understand, even for your audience, because Fiona took the Wow Sunday service. And uh, literally, in the Christian denomination, unfortunately, uh, a woman is not supposed to take the communion service, the Wow Sunday service. So we were uh, literally named the Black Mars at that point of time. And uh, there was a lot of pressure, I think, for um, maybe the people who run uh, the cinema grant at that time, I'm not mm. sure who it was, yeah, there was, but there was a lot of pressure, even phone calls coming in from the highest authorities of the mainline churches. Asking uh, to, to the, yeah. stop hosting. Asking to stop hosting. Uh, yes. uh, this venue. Yes. All right. Uh, this concept called Wow Church, uh, you were speaking to me earlier about the fact that in Sri Lanka it's very hard to register it as a church. So Wow is yet registered as a company. No. See, now, see, yes, let, let's put it like this. So it has been a process, okay. uh, Danu. Uh, and this is the process that I think uh, everyone needs to understand. Sri Lanka, though, it's a democratic country. Uh, religious freedom, minority freedom, gender freedom. Uh, you're talking of uh, 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 racial freedom. There are certain areas that need to be improved. Let's put How it like far that. are we going with democratic here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I have to, because I, I want to represent all minorities. I can't right. only talk of my minority as a Christian, but all minorities face the same thing. So when we want to be registered as a church, though we are qualified, we don't have a place to go and get registered in Sri Lanka. The Christian Affairs Ministry only works for the mainline older churches. But there are 1,500 or more free churches. Now these guys have to register as companies. So at that point of time, we were a company. But because, Sorry. it's important to say, yeah. I just wanted to ask yeah. you, uh, explain what are the mainline churches and the individual. Like, yeah, you okay. Know the so you have the mainline churches, means the classical old churches that have their licenses as churches. And it's a parliamentary process through cabinet where they get a mandate to be a church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're talking about Anglicans, Catholics, Christians, all of that. Yes. We say not Christians, but Anglicans, Methodists, Catholics, right. uh, Baptists. All those orders. And the older charismatic denominations. Right. They Perfect. have a license. Right. So when we started, literally there is no place, that, uh, though this is a democracy, to be able to get a license. Hmm. So though we had studied, though we committed ourselves to the people, we couldn't do it. There are 1,500 churches out there that don't have that right. What we did was we started a diocese with the free churches together and pressured the government to give the rights to the free churches as well as much as they give the mainline churches. You now we have, wanted to join a mainline church or the principles were different? Yes, the value proposition is try. very different. Just a, sim just yeah. a simple thing, uh, I don't want to join a diocese or a church that doesn't give uh, equal rights to women. Hmm. I, I don't want to be a part of that something hmm. like that. We are about reformation and uh, that's, uh, that's a big part of our life church. Reforming the church and bringing in the values that will be appropriate for this time in this season. Fiona, how was it for you when, um, when it was labeled as the Black Mass? Because you oh stood at, yeah. at the sermon, or like giving the... Yeah, oh my, the, the number of calls that I would get every single day, like just people scolding, shouting, you know, just... And I was like, what? Because a woman mm. is taking something that a man can do? What's the problem with that? But I think people's minds are so closed, Danu. And, and I think that's what um, the traditional uh, uh, bonds of religion does. It kind of puts you in shackles and you don't know that you're free. You don't know that you're equal. You, and it's systemic. Mm. So, it, I mean, that's, what we, that's why Kirby keeps talking of reform because reform is needed. The, the, the church is a dying institution. It's not relevant. Who wants to go to church today? I mean, how many people do we know belong to church other than going there for Christmas, going there for, you Easter. know, Easter? It's just a, what we call a dead work, a faithless work, uh, or just a practice of a ritual mm. without deeper understanding of living um, what you truly believe, an authentic life. Uh, this, although, so prior to this uh, interview, we actually met up we had a conversation, an insightful conversation, and I was able to understand the thinking. More than anything, I always believe in one thing. Uh, whatever your faith may be, whoever you believe, as long as you are living as a good human being, contributing towards the world, the positive and the most rejoiceful aura, go ahead, live your life. And I think that's the most important thing. We all want to be good humans, and Amen. that's what we're all trying yeah. to be. Yeah. Uh, something that I understood is that WAV's principles are based on not 
not a religious perspective, it's more on a life perspective, is it? You could say that, yeah. Yes. It's a culture. It's a culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I really believe that there has to be theology, very good theology, and there has to be also that theology in practical life. You can't just talk about Jesus. You have to emulate Jesus and be able to move and talk and, uh, and love people like Jesus loved. Look at the church today. People run away from church. It's accusative. It's judgmental. Uh, they are not interested in talking about the things that we are talking about, Dano. And um, I mean, let's just look at the gender issue and where they are on, yeah. at that issue. So my take is Jesus was a person who lifted up when he ever saw a minority that was persecuted. He would reach out and, and love and raise up and bring back to dignity. And isn't that our job as a church to do with whatever it is, whether it's racial, whether it's religious, whether it's a gender issue? Right. We're going to speak more about the WAV church and their lifestyle and also a little bit about uh, the controversial stories that are going around. Well, who else is the best to answer it than the two who are here? We'll see you after the break. Do stick around. It's State of Play. So during the previous government, uh, there was a lot of stories that came out over the fact that influence was used and uh, there, was a, there was even a letter circulating that you all have got the permit uh, to become a church that is recognized. Tell me the process. I know it was signed off by the Prime Minister's office. Yes. That time it was Sir Rani Vikramasinghe. Yes. What was the process? What happened? What is the wow stand today in terms of marriage? School, yeah. ordination. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, yes. Thank you, Dani, for giving me the opportunity mm. really to address this issue because uh, this issue is not just for me, it's for the 1,400 free churches. That's about 500,000 people uh, that uh, I think the government owe uh, their responsibility and their duty to. So we advocate for that. For instance, uh, a free church cannot bury the dead in certain places done in this country in a public cemetery. The body is desecrated or they have to get a letter from the main line. So that's bureaucratic persecution. To put a child in school, in a public school, when a free church pastor or the child would go to, the, uh, to a public school, they'll say, get a letter from the main line churches or for the NCC. Hmm. You see, these are the persecutions that we have. So we are not, the, the free churches were not recognized. So what we did was not for just with the last government was really, they showed favor to this and they heard our cry. But even with every government, I've been pushing for the same thing. And even with this government, I'm pushing for the same thing. So at that point of time, uh, we got, uh, uh, at that point of time, the Christi they put up a Christian affairs ministry, and the ministry started hearing what we had to say, and they gave us the mandate to be the umbrella covering for the free churches. Now, this is just an advocacy issue. We don't get involved in their tithes, we don't get involved in anything else, but standing up for their fundamental rights to bury their dead, to get their children into school, because these are Christians. And why has, it, why has power, religious power, been franchised just to uh, different organizations and not, been, not looking at the people who are truly actually serving the nation? Now, I'm sure, Danu, that out of the 600, from 1,500 churches, 600 churches came under our um, umbrella after the letter came. So we advocate for them. Oh. My question is, I'm sure that uh, those churches need to be streamlined. I'm sure some of them need to be brought up to standard. I'm sure some of them may be causing havoc in the country. I'm sure some of them are evangelical. Now, I am not evangelical, okay? I'm not, I don't go on that road. I don't believe that people need to be converted. But I do believe that the gospel and the love of Christ should be spread. So uh, to bring them up to standard, you have to first bring them under one umbrella or bring them um, under a diocesan. So that is what happened in the last regime where I was appointed as the overseer, the bishop of the free churches. And um, I had a mandate for 600 people that I could talk, to, talk for and represent. And that's all I was doing for them. And this letter is still valid, although the government toppled and there's a... Yes, I mean, at the end okay. of the day, it's a letter from the secretary of the, um, uh, uh, the prime minister's office uh, in tell, informing the, the uh, Christian Affairs Ministry to register the free churches like all the other churches are registered. Did you try to appeal the WOW Church or like s speak to the Vatican about it? <laughs> okay, that's, awesome. that's a really interesting question. So, you see, there's 42,000 denominations globally yeah. in Christianity. Mm. 42,000, just imagine that. So, I don't... And Wow is one of those. Y yes, absolutely, yeah. you know. I, I am represented by my bishop. He has 20,000 churches in India. He, uh, bishop Paul T. Maran, awesome man of God. 
I'm, I'm, I, I'm responsible to Pastor Neil Obey-Sekera, who is a bishop in Dubai. And so our denomination is one of the 41,000 denominations. Uh, so I don't find myself responsible uh, to Pope Francis, though I love him as a person. Uh, but I'm not accountable to him. But right. I am accountable to my leaders. Got you. Just wanted to ask that as well. <laughs> just because I no, can no, ask great things. Yeah. And it's, it's also yeah. the fact that uh, they, are, uh, they said, ask away. Yes, so ask I'm, away. I'm happy to like ask. Yes. <laughs> Let's leave the church aside. Let's go about the two of you. Yes. You guys have known each other for a long time. And you all were up to yes, all types all of nonsense. Of yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about how you all met and how did you all get involved in all the nonsense? Um, wow, we met in school. Yeah, in school. Uh, Kirby was the bad boy that walked into school one day and all of us were like, Ooh, who's that guy with the you ponytail? You all just love the bad boys. <laughs> no? I couldn't get into any other school, right? Yeah, no other school would take him. <laughs> yeah. and, um, so and this was after you left St. Thomas's Prep? St. Thomas's Prep School, yeah. yeah and so you went 19, into what school? So, so no other school was taking me, including college, and that was like a rare thing. <laughs> Generally from Prep, you graduate from college. <laughs> yeah, but true. I was one of the only names that said, no, this guy can't come in, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so what happened? I didn't have a school, my, but my mom knew Kingsley in Wycherley. Right. Yeah. And, you know, he, you know, Mr. Kingsley, Kingsley is awesome. a disciplinarian, right? Uh -huh. So this is the best place to put him. And he said, I'll take him under my wing. We'll right. see what happens. But when I got there, Kingsley warned my mom about Fiona. <laughs> and said, as long as he doesn't get involved <laughs> in this group. <laughs> yeah, of course. Was, oh my God. Yeah, you remember that. Yeah. So the, the, both of y'all were like the, the, the ones. Probably. Yeah, I mean, okay. I didn't know what bad was until I met you, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I Whoa. thought I was. But. Right. <laughs> so then y'all hit it off. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we, and we were, She was uh, 13 and a half, I was 15. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. 1991 or 15 two, or six, I think. Yeah. And what she type of trouble did y'all create? And what did, let's ask this way. I've been told that you guys did everything. Drugs, you yes, name it, sure. you did it all. Yeah. Yes. What didn't you do? <laughs> I, 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 that's, a, that's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. What didn't we do? Ooh, well, I'll, I'll tell you something. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell you something straight. I've, I've, I never sold drugs. I never killed a man. And I've never uh, paid for sex. Let's put it like that. And I'd, for, for, well, those are the three things that I've not done. Yeah, okay. I hope that helped. <laughs> yeah. Neither have I. None of that. <laughs> those three. Yeah. Apart from that, did it all. Yeah, I would okay. say. And you all found love in midst of that. Chaos. Yeah, I think yes. we started off as very good friends, right? That's right. And then we would study together. He'll help me with my political science, my l law exams. Uh. Because he was like the... Although he was like totally misunderstood, I think. Kirby was like the brain box, uh. you know? So, and that's when it all started in 1992. So since then, we've been together, no looking back. Yeah, 28 uh, yeah. years now. Yeah, married for 18. Yeah. But in when, did you, when did you find God? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that's interesting, Donna, because for me personally, I didn't find God. And that's where I don't like the charismatic nuance or the Pentecostal nuance of let's get someone saved. I run away from people mm. who want to save me. Mm. Like, save me from what? You know, so that, that's something I still hold. I never give an altar call in my church. I don't think people need salvation. I think God is already in them. And for me, God was in me. Mm. And he was trying to find an expression. And so, of course, all those things I look back and you know, where the Pentecostal charismatic look like uh, things are, are of sinners or shame. When I look at people, I just see that that's their process to really understanding who they are in Christ. And uh, that's what happens. So uh, through the process, I used to tell Fiona, you know, I'm, I'm feeling God is calling me. Even in my worst days, Danu, I would go partying. And when I part, I must tell you the story. I, when we used to party, literally, I would be literally on pills, on ecstasy, and I would talk about Jesus. Okay, so you can understand that I didn't have a duality. I didn't have a separation that Jesus is not with me when I go to the bathroom or Jesus is not with me or when I'm at that, that point of time, you know, mm -hmm. when, I, when I was with Fiona or something like intimate in the room, I didn't put the picture of Jesus down like some people mm -hmm. would do, you know. He I, was there always. He was there always. Even when I was partying, I would, I would be flying in a club, I would talk about Jesus. So then what happened was I found him in a deeper sense that I was able to let go of that. And that's the process I take people through as well, not looking at their past in accusation or condemnation. Okay. But when was the day that you were like, okay, this is it. I'm going to stop everything oh. that, is, that I consider evil. Yes, yes. And I'm going to move away from it. When was that day? Yes, so that was, uh, that was really uh, when WOW first started. I was invited to government at that point to advise uh, the, a ministry. 
and when Wildlife Church started, was at literally the same time, simultaneously. And at that time, I needed to get cleaned up. Just before we got yeah. married, perhaps. Yeah. Just before we got married, I yeah. needed to get cleaned up. We were staying up all night, partying, going out. I, my business was very successful. Uh, I had a $25 million tea plant in Dubai. Uh, I, I had my prawn farms here. We were, I was doing very well, and honestly, uh, but I just saw that people needed uh, a shift and a change. And I, 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 I felt that I could do something with my relationship that I had with God at that time. And then I, you had to be an example, right, Danu? I mean, you had to be able to run 100 kilometers before you tell someone run one. So I first started saying, look, why don't we tame down, train ourselves, start uh, practicing fasting? And the way I got out of those things, really, because the problem is not the drugs or the alcohol, Danu. The problem is addiction. And I believe, I personally believe, there's no such thing as drugs, but there are drug addicts. You can be a drug addict with chocolate, you can be a drug addict with porn, you can be a you can, drug addict. Anything, is, <laughs> exactly. yeah, anything it, beyond it, its yeah. level is an addiction. 100%. Of course. So my problem was with addiction, and I started fasting to deal with my addiction. And my God, it worked fabulously. So how long did that process take from the day you decided, let's clean up? Yeah. Um, well, I still remember, I, I think I, I, I was just about turning 30, right? Yeah. When we made like a decision, a okay, decision. we're gonna, we need to make a crossover in right. some sense, because we, we, we're not mature enough to be able to balance all this at this right. point. And um, so we left our usual friends. Mm. It was really a tough time for us, because I mean, that was our life. And that's what our, you knew. Yes. Yeah. And now you're walking uh, into a yeah. lonely place. Exactly. Yes. And yeah. we're like, okay, you know, how, you know, can we actually be high and happy huh. without, you know, doing all this yeah. stuff? And it was a journey, but it took us maybe one or two years before yeah. we were just, after that we had created our own culture, a new culture. Uh, our most of our came. friends who were anyway partying with us were there. They were the co-founders of WOW with us. They used to call it the Blue Elephant Revival. Mm. <laughs> because, I mean, you would have all, everyone who was at the Blue would be at Sunday or Tuesday at our services. Right. All right, so that's the beginning of WOW. Now, when we do come back, we're going to speak about something that you have asked me to talk about. Uh, you could address it, gimmick, magic, uh, what is this act? Well, speak about it, because I really want to know if I can pluck diamonds off the sky as well after the break. Welcome back to the show. It's a date with Danu. We are speaking to Kirby and Fiona about the Wow Church. As much as we would like to uh, get deep into this, without speaking to every other person, I thought, let's speak to them itself. Uh, so, addressing someone as a prophet has been one of the biggest things that has been spoken about. It could be from any gathering where they preach uh, because they feel that the title prophet is given to the biggest power. How does it work at WOW? Okay, so let me first uh, take just that one section of the title prophet. One is that I've never asked anyone to address me as a prophet and that's something that all my friends know. I'd rather they, they don't they, actually. We rather they, they don't <coughs> and we prefer K or Kirby or whatever it is, just first name basis and all our friends at church really call us that. So where the, where the word prophet comes is when someone writes, they will say prophet and that's simply from the New Testament and that doesn't mean that you're like, it's like you're not like Prophet Muhammad or some or exalted prophet, figure. Yeah. Who's, it means a guy who can maybe see a bit of the future for you and direct you. And so it's a gifting that they're calling. It's like an engineer or a doctor. So that is where the misunderstanding is. But it's actually, you have five uh, officers in the New Testament. Apostle, so he's, that's the higher one. Prophet, teacher, evangelist and pastor. So it's like going to a pastor you might not be able to get the same resolution that you get from a teacher mm. or an evangelist. Like going to a doctor, but you want an engineer. So that is why in the culture, they use this word prophet. And honestly, we don't like it. And uh, we have but never... This is what the, the ones who come to WOW yeah. call you. And it's out of love or respect. Or yes, whatever. I think they come from yeah. a charismatic evangelical culture. Okay. And because like even my pastors would either call me bishop or prophet. Because okay. they're reading the Bible and then there's like, this is our senior. He's not a pastor because we know what the difference between an engineer and a doctor. So he's a prophet. So then we call him prophet. So then people who are not in the culture misunderstand this. But it's not some exalted position. It's just an official functional role. Right. And honestly, we'd rather just yeah, we'd be, rather be friends. Yeah. Yeah. 
Take your phone out and wave it at me. Take your phone, your phone, your phone. Your phone, your phone, your phone, your phone. Just wave it at me now. Now, now, now. I declare right now that your phone batteries will charge. As a sign, as a sign, as a sign that this word, when I release this word, that it's doing something to you. It's not just your phone batteries will charge now, 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 now. Come on, sh- give me a big shout. Woo, come on. Whoa, now, 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 now. Check your phone, check your phone, check your phone, okay? You'll see that your phone batteries are charging. Why? Because this word is life. I'm going to release a word now, okay? Is it life? How many of you have your phone batteries charged? Wave your hand if it got charged. If it has got charged, yeah, what happened? 34 to 36. 34 to 36. Okay, so I'm going to run. What is that? What is that? How much? 58 to 64. Come on. Who else? Who else? Who else? It's 100%. Who else? Yeah, it's 100%. It's 100%. Yeah. 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 How many of you can see if your phone bill is paid? If I can pay it off now. How, how, can you check on your phone whether it's paid? Can you check? I declare it now. I declare it now. I declare it now. I declare it now. That money will come into your account. Pay your bills. Pay your bills. Come on. Grab, you don't like this? This is good, right? <laughs> come on. And how many of you checked your phone bill right now? Yeah. How many checked it and find that there is a new deposit in or something has got paid off? Just wave your hand if someone someone has got this happen. We have, yeah? It's been paid? It's been paid? Yeah? Oh, zero? Zero. Come on, zero. Just pay it right now. But I want you to see, she's the one of the only ones. When I started talking like this, I can tell you, she's one of the only ones who believed. Because she said, I want it now. Am I correct, ma'am? She started waving her phone. This lady over here. She said, I want that right now. I want that. I need that done now. Is your one done as well? Zero balance. Zero balance. Same account. It's the same account. And now it says zero. <laughs> I'm just going to push it in, and then push it in, push it in, push it in, push it in, ah, there, push it in that, and now I can see it here from this side, okay, and see, I'm just going to be able to just, we can, we can push it, do you want me to push no, it through? No, 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 it's hmm? no, no, I, I know, you can either don't do it, please don't do it, thank yeah, you. But yeah, but is it, yeah? Yeah, yeah it's, it's off, it's off, thank you. Okay, now it's oh. out, now watch it, pull it out, let okay. me pull it out. Okay. It's mind over mind. Okay. See, no blood, no blood, no blood. Uh, now, where everything became such a story was, especially in terms of charging of the phone, yes. is when WoW really came into the spotlight yes, right. and people <laughs> really spoke about it. There were a lot of yes. newspaper articles on it, yes. TV shows. <laughs> there was it all. Yes. Yeah. Please tell me, right, we always see miracles happening. happening. It could be at a prayer service yeah. or mm-hmm. there, there are sometimes unanswered <coughs> medical, uh, medical miracles. miracles that have mm-hmm. happened. Like even the doctors are flabbergasted. Yes. They're like, we really don't know what happened, but yes. it's a miracle. And it takes a lot for them to say it. Yes. Now, these things have been around for a long time. Yes. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, miracles like this, charging the phone, sometimes they say like he picks diamonds from the sky. Mm-hmm. What are these and how do these happen? Does it happen? Yeah. Are these misquoted? How did the news come out apart from the ones who were there to witness it? Yeah. Tell me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, and if you know, I might also have something to say about it, but yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me just start. Uh, it's like Jesus' first miracle was, if, uh, please don't get upset at me watching me, but I just had to bring it down to that was someone would consider, who is watching from outside, like a party trick. Because it was turning water into wine. These guys were already very hammered down. If you read the passage, chapter 2, John, you'll realize that these guys had drunk much at that point of time. And then he comes and really converts water into wine, which is controversial at every extent. One with the drinking situation, the other he's turning water into wine. So that is now what we call a sign and a wonder. It's not a healing. Now, Surely there were lepers in, the, uh, in that place. Surely there were sick people. Surely there were dying people. That would have been a big wedding, right? Okay. But he didn't go there. But why did he go for signs and wonders as his first miracle to reveal his glory? It's a question we need to ask. We see another situation where Jesus goes and he takes money from a fisher's mouth to pay the tax. Just imagine you're paying tax doing this kind of thing. He pulls money, uh, dollars from a fisher's mouth and pays tax. Now, 
if Jesus did that, for me, I'd like to find out how the heck did he do that? Like healings, uh, honestly, every Tom, Dick and Harry today can heal. You can be a pranic healer, you can be a Reiki healer. I like a challenge, I, know. I, I master my craft. You know, I've been doing this now for over 30 years and I focus on this. I meditate, I pray. And this for charging phones or transferring money, mind over matter or mind over mind is an expertise that I have and very few people in the world can do it. And uh, I've told anyone, you know, you, you, you bring me an audience and you ask me to uh, do one of these things and you'll see this thing happen. And I have understood it, it's not scientific, but I, but I like science. I, so I understood that we have an energy in us and through intention, you can shift your energy and that energy is what we call spirit. And so I sort of got very good at doing this. I'm invited all over the world and you've seen videos you can see online. Where I'm in America and people's monies are getting transferred and you know, it's mind over mind. I believe everything is conscious, including this cup has a consciousness and Donald Hoffman and people scientists today are realizing and there's a way that this spirit can tap into that spirit and suddenly something can shift in consciousness and change. So that's how I do it. And uh, man, I like demonstrations. And, and I've told people, please come to the services. At one point, the government, oh. uh, previously done honestly, when we were getting really famous and all these churches were coming, at one point, they were putting in cameras into our meetings for, at the warehouse and trying to find out where these gems are falling. or But no one could find uh, whatever. And honestly, uh, it's recorded in the police, one of these intelligence officers fell from the roof and onto, onto his demise into, in, at the warehouse. You see, you're trying to fix something somewhere. So we've been thoroughly investigated. And uh, my Our thing Officers is, have been broken into, passports taken. taken yeah. They've thoroughly investigated and us. And this because is done they can, by who? I be, be, at the, that the, time, it was... The government, because the, the government. government, because <coughs> was the inter when the, with the police record of the guy who fell was intelligence. Right. So that means it becomes a... Yeah. I was investigated by intelligence. Right. So but, to, but, on, uh, yeah. Yeah. but on the plus side yeah. of it, through all that, people who've been asked to investigate us, mm. asked to you know, go and take this and take that and inquire, have actually, when they've gone through the process, when they've looked at our, uh, our details, when they've met us, spoken to us, they have totally come back and said, we're really sorry we have to do this. Yeah. You know, we realize that you know, I mean, I may not understand what's going on, but I do see something that is authentic and well meant in all of this. Yeah. You but know? Danu, so uh, I must tell you that there are charlatans, there are people who do gimmicks and stuff like that. And uh, please understand that, that that is there and that that fear, the people, this guy is maybe trying to do some sort of magic that is not with a K. There's a magic with a K that is different. You know, there's, there's mentalism, then there's magic with a K, and then there's theurgy. Now I'm into theurgy. So, uh, but you have to, to get into theurgy, you have to know magic with a K, you have to know mentalism, you have to know, you have to be a maestro in all that and then get into this he level. He spends all his time, any free moment, even when I go for a run, Dano, now mm. we say we're going for a run, we're training for Ironman at the moment, I, suddenly I can hear like a noise, like somebody like nearly <laughs> falling over. He is now with his eyes closed in the seventh heaven, running, doing some meditation, exp you know, uh, everything he does it's is trance running. through uh, trance running, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like retro running, trance running. So everything he does is kind of, he questions, how is this happening? Why is this happening? Is there any better way of doing it? Mm. You know, so and you challenge the norm. Yes, challenge the norm. He, he challenges our, our perception of reality. Sorry. Yeah. So, because why why this whole phone charging thing <coughs> yes. became something that affected everyone or created a curiosity yes. is something that we do it every day. It's yes. in our yeah. life to just Absolutely. plug that blooming phone. Yeah. To it. Now I have a phone charger. Now I Absolutely. there have been times now with these power cuts that I'm like, shoot, yeah. I didn't charge my phone, yeah. right? And and it's not like I'll be like, okay, now let's <laughs> yes. charge the phone. Because I am. You know, <laughs> uh, but it's in those. You know, in those but moments. But for this to happen, there have to be people who are as equally, who are believing in what is happening. Uh, the faith is all there. Yes. So, so this, is the, this is the thing, right? Uh, I know the theurgy of how it practically happens, how this crazy <coughs> stuff, like these are not existential stuff, Donna. Honestly, uh, the, the fact that a battery can charge gives me hope that if, if something can happen and the battery can charge, next time I lay my hands on someone to pray who's dying, the same power their to charge a battery, their cells yeah. also can charge. So it just gives us hope 
that's all. These are not existing. These are really silly stuff. Only I would only I am the only idiot who will spend time trying to <laughs> charge a phone or you know someone else will try. But that's what interests me. Yeah. I'm I'm interested in silly little kiddish things, you know. And so when I bring it to public, then it's misunderstood. And honestly, the last time I did it, I just said, look, we have to be like children, and you know we have to be able to encounter God as a child. So it's not like I'm saying you have to have the power to charge your phone. But I said, could could you have the power? Like, if you speak with intention, with the right consciousness, can be energy. You're an electrical field. Can that electrical field be shifted and, uh, and changed through intention? And it can be. And today, you'll see the scientists in the future will say that it can be. Okay? And I'm, I'm getting better at what I'm doing. But it takes a lot of training and practice. And people might laugh at that. But I'm saying, you try and do it. Can you do it? You know? do you, I, if you practice, you can do it. Any man can do it. But I put in the work and effort that people think, uh, is something stupid or silly. And that doesn't mean I want people to come to bow to charge phones. But I'm saying yeah. anything is possible. If you think of anything, it is possible. Humanity has a powerful godliness inside of them. And I'm trying to just bring that out with, my, with this non-existential little... A lot of uh, people did ask me to give you a phone and say charge it. And I said, no. <coughs> yes. I said, that's not what I'm trying to do. Sure. I just want to know the answer yes. to the questions that we're all asking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And if we can answer it, I'd rather hear the answer than just, you know... Uh, uh, absolutely, Dan. And, and honestly, to tell, tell, the, tell the audience, it's not me special to have special power. It's just that I'm thinking that energy can be transferred. And like I'm telling the audience right now even, it's, it's, as, it's as simple as if you put your intention right now, you can look at your batteries, you can mm. look at your computers, look in, you look at it, and you'll realize that certain things have shifted, certain markers have shifted. Now, what was that? And that was a transfer, and I'm telling you, there'll be people who look and say, well, that, that really happened right now. Now, that wasn't me. I'm that going to do that <laughs> my fuel, man. <laughs> just, when it's going empty, I'm going to be like, yeah. with all yeah. the energy, yeah. just yeah. set this vehicle yeah. on fire. Yeah. <laughs> but why did Jesus do it? That's the question that we have to ask. Why yeah. did Jesus do silly, non-existential things like that? Maybe to be our example, no? that we can depend on God for the smallest thing. And if I can pass that on, that for the silliest thing, just you can I really depend on the power within you. it out of our yeah. sleep. Yeah. It wakes us up to say, oh, could there be something yeah. more? It gives us hope. Um, and, you know, otherwise, if you're going to believe just everything that you think reality is as it's uh, projected on the news, on TV, by people's opinions, then it's going to be a really sad life, Dano. You know, yeah. so... You the Matrix for me is not yeah. a movie. The Matrix is a documentary that we all are living in and we don't understand that the shift of consciousness can change reality. And I just want to demonstrate that in little small ways. Have you done it be after that? Yes, my God, you, you, you see the videos in America yeah. just recently where I think you, you might want to play some. For we'll play yeah. that for you. Uh, actually, yeah. I've got all these videos which I can add to the show. Yes. We're going to get into a break. When we do come back, I'm going to touch some very sensitive uh, <laughs> past stories which have been put across to me to ask. And the fact that <laughs> mm -hmm. I have such an open conversation with them makes me feel comfortable enough to ask you. Thank you. And I would like to ask Absolutely. that when we do Thank come you. back, do stick around. It's Day to Done. All right, welcome back to the show. Let's go back in time. So these are questions that have been put together. <laughs> okay. uh, when you were at St. Thomas's Prep, you actually had a movement, and that was called the Antichrist Movement. <laughs> the Antichrist Movement. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's what, they, they, that's what people uh, say. Uh, but let's... Uh, if, what, what did I, you call yeah, it? Yeah, no, no. But there was no such movement. It was a, it was a movement. Uh, it wasn't a movement. It was friends getting together at interval time, okay. you know, discussing tarot cards and Ouija boards and stuff like that. Because and there was also... Rock. And it's listening to ACDC and Iron Maiden that I still listen to and like very much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's also this connection between Diresh Devanayagam's yes, yeah. uh, parents being yeah. killed by yes, him, yes, saying that yeah. that has a direct connection yes. to Kirby. Yes, that's right, yeah. Would so, you like so, to... So, uh, you know, I don't want to speak for Diresh because he's got his own story. But my connection there was I had invited him to a friend's party that night. And uh, he was supposed to bring the beers. Right. And I was waiting for the phone call of where they come my beers. Mm. Because at that time, beers were scarce and we were not allowed to go right. at that age to get our own beers. And uh, the beers didn't come. And then we heard this whole story. But unfortunately, what happened was um, due to certain things that he said there, maybe I have no reason understanding why. Maybe he wanted to... Um, I'm, I'm, I don't think he wanted to put the blame on me in any way, but my life in, at that young age, 
got scandalized. And right. that's why I know Scandal Dana so well, because this is a very intimate time in my life. I was just 15 years old. I had a group of friends. Uh, I, there are parents who loved me, you know, and the friends' parents who loved me. And suddenly this matter... And it was told that it was a part of this movement. Yes. It was a sacrifice that he yes, had to do. Yes, yes, I don't know what he... Honestly, I don't know what he yeah. did. I don't want to talk for him. But I was just mentioned in one of his... Uh, that we discuss Iron Maiden and backward masking tapes and stuff like that. And of course, as young kids, you know, I don't know what you know what backward masking is. It's like this silly thing that we do with tapes at that point of time. And that, that could have affected him in a certain way. But now he's also a pastor. Yes, he is at the AOG church, I think, yes. Right. Yes, but uh, uh, he's not a part of us. But this actually happened, and my name got involved in that, Dano. And um, at, at, from my, from my young, young age, uh, so I was sort of uh, blamed for, or for influencing someone in the wrong way or something like that. And I'll tell you something, but that actually reinstated my call. So it really called, like, why, why did it suddenly come on me when I had nothing to do with it? Mm. And they did the police investigation. I was not even involved in it. So why did this come on me? And from that time onwards, I realized that my life will be different. And, that, and it trained me not to fear man, to stand in my conscience and in my truth. And if I'm standing on the right thing, not to worry what people said and stuff like that. And, and actually, in a funny way, uh, what happened to me at that time in my young age, uh, it taught you something. It taught me something, but it also taught me the weakness of the church. Oh. That a church uh, will not be there for people who uh, will move away from someone, will reject someone when uh, people look at them in the wrong way. There is a fear of man and a man pleasing that goes on. And here I was completely innocent of everything. Fiora, very did young. you know about his uh, Antichrist <laughs> uh, movement? Um, well, there were lots of rumours about who he was when he but first joined. But you like the bad boy. You're no. like, <laughs> you're like mm, let yeah. him come here. Actually, <laughs> no. No, uh, there were a lot of things going around and when he came, there was like, ooh, he did this, he did yeah. that. But then I got to know him and then little by little, I even, I, even, I mean, we used to, uh, we met Diresh and I, he became a good friend of mine as well. Um, and then I learned a little bit more about what really processed out of it and that Kirby was just totally scandalized in the whole thing. And yeah, and so well, we just went on with life. But like you said, I think it really propelled him at a very young age to stand firm and stand strong and just know what he knows without worrying about what people have to say. Yeah. Another thing that, uh, something that you and I will always agree on, uh, wow is definitely a topic that's spoken about at most dinners, sure. most parties, yeah. most gatherings. Sure. And nowadays people actually openly say we are scared to talk about it because you never know who is a wow member. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have this, grown quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, it is actually true. I'm sure yes. you all would have heard yes. that as well. Yeah. Now, um, you know, the life of the Lord was always the simple life is what uh, but you know they say don't be materialistic and all the yeah. stuff um, I am a Catholic and I, I, I've told you all yeah, my faith yeah. I have always yes. believed in the Lord and I will always believe in him and miracles yeah. have happened in my life which I can proudly yeah. say I'm happy to uh, have experienced all of those but I love to dress up yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure you will understand absolutely. But uh, yeah. but when it comes to someone who is in the public eye as someone who is a pastor or someone who is actually uh, preaching the word of the yes. Lord and when they do shopping and all those stuff it becomes controversy as yes. to where the money is coming Absolutely. from is the church paying for it. Yeah. Mm. How have you all taken it because when you all go on trips yeah. I saw you all recently you all have gone to the US and sure. pictures were out and about mm -hmm. sure. you didn't care so much yeah. how do you handle that and have you ever had the reason to do you feel like you should explain or you don't? Um, I don't mind explaining when a question is asked like this. Of course, absolutely, we are a public figure. We have to explain. Uh, like I said before, Danu, before I became a priest and really studying theology and doing what I'm doing, I was a businessman. I worked for government as well. I have 86 acres of prawn land. I have a tea company that won has won awards. Uh, we still have those businesses. So when I gave my life to Christ in a way where I can serve him, what I did was I delegated those companies Two others. We had a media company, and we still have a media company, and we, we delegated those to phenomenal people to run it for us. And so those companies run, 
And I always said, when I do church, I don't want to be these, like these other pastors, but to depend on their leadership or partners and to finance their ministry. And uh, I, I said, Lord, I will, I will step into your role as, as someone who serves you. If I have enough money of my own, I don't have to depend on people. And honestly, today, uh, Danu, we are in that position. And so we serve our churches, our pastors, with our personal wealth. I and mean, of course, we've got, as you are an example, you see many people come and say, man, this guy is really, he's, he's putting where his money where his mouth is. And many people have now come uh, alongside of us, of course. And they are equal partners and co-founders. We're doing church with, with our friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. With the ones and they that also contribute towards the people who may not be able to Absolutely. afford things and oh, yeah. from uh -huh. the church. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, from yeah. operations to medical uh, emergencies to, uh, to everything, I mean. Uh, Do you uh, feel the, some enter the WOW Church for the glam that comes with it or the connection that comes with there's another story on those things mm -hmm. saying right. if you come into the wow wow yeah. community you are <laughs> yeah. somehow looked after by each other and <laughs> yes. there's some kind of funding yeah. for I you mean, there is a community yeah. and there are benefits of being a part of a community like friendship right yeah. like you're there for your friends if your right. friend is going through an operation and doesn't have finances you're going to be there for right. them um, and there's a support team and a structure. And I'm sure that's a big plus. Of community. Uh, of, yeah, of community them, yeah. and culture. And we re we're really big on that. Yeah. We're really strong. I mean, our guys are so, so loyal, so loyal strong, yeah. laid down. You know, we're like family. We yeah. call it wow family. Yeah. And so perhaps that's an attractive thing for someone who's coming uh, from a different culture, who's been stabbed in the back, who betrayed, nobody, you no know, friends, betrayed. No it's family. an attractive thing, and I don't see anything wrong with it. Yeah, mm. I we're, actually, we're, I think very, more people yeah. should kind of emulate it in their yeah. own. And, and, you know, and we're not saying we're the only community that, that has that. I, I think every uh, spiritual community around the world. If you look at the Muslims today, if you look at the Boras mm. today, if you look at the Buddhist, uh, they all have a community that has a support. Mm. So we have infrastructure that does support uh, anyone who comes in, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, that's something that I really wanted to speak about because we do have, they always feel that this is something that was addressed to me over the fact that do we only have the influential people at WOW? Mm. Uh, and that is something, yeah. was the reason why I asked yeah. you this question. Danu, if you don't mind, can I just add something there? Yeah, please. Yeah, you see some, we have something called the Warehouse Project and the Warehouse Project and Nelly Tree. And th those projects are not just for Christians. There are Muslims, there are Buddhists. Mm. The Warehouse Project is done in a Buddhist temple with Hamadro, who's my close buddy and friend, and who I honor and respect and learn much from. And it's done through the temple. And we have uh, uh, really fathered and mentored kids who were like 12 years old when we got them. Today they're 18, 19, they're doing the best jobs. And so the whole community backs that person, makes sure they can get a job. Those people are not become Christians. You know, they you can ask Hamadro at this point yeah. of time, they don't even come to WOW. You know, we, we're not even interested, we're not interested in that. But we just want to make sure that everyone, that we come into our, our sphere of influence has dignity. Hmm. And to infuse that dignity is our hope. Amazing. All right, a little bit of a break. We'll see you on the other side. Just stick around. It's a day with that. Welcome back to the show. So, <laughs> they have watched the usual date with Danu program, yeah. trying to figure out. <laughs> Fiona said, Fiona, uh, if Danu asks, <laughs> if you wake up gay one day, who are you going to yes. date? <laughs> who can make you gay? Uh, yeah, who can be gay? That's the yeah. question yeah. you'd ask someone. Yeah. Yeah. And we saw that. <laughs> but yeah, who can make you gay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll look for anyone, it doesn't matter gender, who, who, has, who emulates Fiona's personality. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. That's, that's, that's a good answer. Yeah. Yeah, he's safe on your side <laughs> and he's safe on our side as well. Uh, but I must say, talking about the whole gay chapter, it is one of the biggest things that uh, the, the rules in our country frowns upon it. Church, religion, all of these things do frown upon such a taboo topic to speak about. Absolutely. But it's there, it has been around for so long and it has, uh, it has broken people emotionally or yes. it has made them super strong. They're like, exactly. sorry for the language, yeah. but we will just exactly. go ahead and do what we want exactly. to do. Yeah. But the WOW Church has openly invited and made the gay community a part of the church yes. as well. How has that worked? And has that led to any negative? Of course. I know. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the, 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 the first problem yeah. I had with the church saying that I'm not a church like them or uh, cultified me was over this very issue when uh, someone from uh, 
a charismatic denomination that has been here for some time, came to our church and they said, don't you know that he is well? I said, I really don't care what he is, as long as he has a relationship with God and he's living his life righteously. That's what I care about. And uh, this issue is one of the main issues that is not spoken about why the other churches might not like us so much because we are very vociferous on this. And honestly, we have open arms for every single person, whether it's gender, whether it's race, whether it's religion. And here's the, here's the, here's the thing that I can only say for a pastor watching me out there who wants to think, crucify me and think that I'm not one of you because I believe in this. This is something that you need to read your Bible in Matthew 19. Uh, it clearly says, Jesus clearly says down in Matthew 19, there's 400,000 textual variants in the New Testament. So you, people can play around with words. So the word homosexual, trust me, for political reasons, can be played around with. If you do your research, you'll find it. But forget about that. Let's take something that doesn't need interpretation with Matthew 19. Jesus says that there are eunuchs and some are born eunuchs and you have to deal with that. And he asks, can you, can you take this? Some are born eunuchs. Now a eunuch, going back in the Greco-Roman period, I don't have to explain it to you, uh, many people will understand a eunuch is someone who would have had a sex change operation at that time. Okay, but that's what a eunuch would be, right? And he says, some are born like this. Now when Jesus says something like that, and the first person he bapt uh, that the New Testament baptized was a eunuch, like what are we discussing here? It's, it's just ridiculous and it's just control and accusation. And uh, honestly, we, we are ready to stand against stuff like that and we are unafraid uh, to, to be able to stand for the gay community. And, Do you see uh, there's rights. a progress in terms of churches internationally that are the main churches? Yes. Do you think they are accepting of it right now? Because even the Pope made a very strong statement about it. Right. Uh, yes, I, I, yes, absolutely. I don't think the main, main, mainline churches are anywhere close to this. I will honestly tell you the truth. Forget about the more progressive churches are also not. But someone's got to start. Someone needs to speak it. Like, I'm not the one who should speak for gender equality with women. Like, there should be women speaking about it. But and this is the role I play. So, of course, but we should start from somewhere. And me, as a persecuted minority in this country, that I told you the problems that we have, what a hypocrisy if I'm fighting, asking for my minority rights and simply can't afford that same minority rights to another community just because, say, you, say they have uh, doctrinal differences, but just on a simple, just humanity, the minority rights of another uh, group of people should be as valuable, otherwise it's uh, hypocrisy. Hmm. And so I will, I will stand for any marginalized community in a nation. have to ask you, especially now with where the country is going, yes. We barely have anything to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Breath <laughs> or air is Breath. going to be the best diet that we can be on. Yeah. What are you standing in line for today for some air? Yes, that's right. So, living on air. Yeah, living on air. <laughs> How do you all do it? So you, breatharians, yes. is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called breatharians. breatharians. You yeah. also do, the, do it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, no, I did, I did, I do she fast for yeah. long periods of time yeah. with him. I'm, I'm not a fan of fasting, yeah. but I, I'm, I'm truly uh, food food is really good. an advocate family, right? of how beneficial it can okay. be for you. So tell yeah. me about how, how long don't you eat? Okay, so when I first started, so again, for me, I wanted to, I, I didn't try to go without eating Dano. I wanted to know this God. Is God real? I want to have an encounter. So the best way to have encounters, one, either you take LSD or take a mushroom, <laughs> been there, done that, okay? But, you know, I, I, it did So it there are a lot of people who have seen God then. They're like, yeah. oh, man. Exactly, you know? <laughs> Is but this then, who you are? <laughs> so I see people, like in every tradition, who, who actually fast and they have these encounters. And so that's how it started. So I started fasting. And I was at that time on all kinds of psychedelics to whatever, mm. right? Uh, and at that point of time, I wanted to let go. So what I did was I started fasting to be able to connect with God. And this started becoming a habit. And so I could go, it's normal in Christianity that people do 40 day fast, okay? I don't know how much they fast, but they've had the fasting breakfast or something like that, okay? But so I went fully on, uh, 40 days, water only. And then after that, naturally your nervous system gets set to um, receive subtler energies, Dano. There are subtler energies that your nervous system can be sensitive to. People call it prana and all kinds of things, but it's the life force inside of you. And my body started getting used to subtler and more subtler energies. And so I started fasting long terms, long terms like this. And today, fasting is like everyone is intermittent fasting. Those days, if I told mm -hmm. someone to fast 16 hours, they'll ask me, I'm nuts. 10 years ago, when I started doing this, people thought I was crazy. 
but now fasting has proved mm. that it increases your uh, your uh, mitochondria your um, um, uh, your hormone levels shift and change so it's a very very good thing so at he that never point, encouraged he never wanted to create breatharians no. but he was doing that was his personal journey yeah, yeah. i'm is, an example yeah. that that is just you drinking me. water yes drinking and, water and how many yeah. days were you drinking water and sometimes so so okay so let's if, if you don't mind me i can't give you a tweet answer for this i'll have to give you a slightly but technical I, for for people to uh, to understand there is a way that you can change the body the mechanics of the body <coughs> to literally be able to um, live on uh, juice greens and subtle energies the more you give it stronger calories 5000 calories 10000 calories your body will always want that's the fuel consumption it will have so there's a way to shift this and it's called a seven day program that many people around the world do mm. and in that there is it has to be done with experts who know how to do it now i'm invited all around the world to conduct these programs that literally in five days to seven days you switch your body switches there's a water there's a dry fasting aspect to that which i do not recommend again anyone do do it without the right type of guidance for this there's a dry fasting aspect to it and then there's a water only aspect to it and when you do that your body shifts and from that time onwards 50% 60% 70% of your intake just since i reduces. first did the program in 2012 i fought yeah. i was kicking and screaming i was his she worst, was my worst student okay, she cried um, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> i got offended with him <laughs> I, i considered divorce <laughs> yeah. I, I did, I did. Um, but but since then i my entire it's like i had a reset button go off and i could have greater authority over food i was led very differently what to eat i dropped a permanent size permanent size i was like a 12 i became a 10 and mm. even if i try to become a 12 now i i you know what i mean so it change it just changes you so i i mean it's a very life changing the yeah it is it is a life it really <coughs> and your, your consciousness increases when you are not putting sugar or uh, carbs down uh, your body your sensitivity reduces so as you do a little bit of fast raise your sensitivity increases and naturally your energy production shifts so i am not advocating breatharianism i went for a long time without eating the national geographic found us uh, the national geographic dano took me to america they flew me down this is an interesting story i have all the emails to show anyone uh, yeah. document this is a crazy story <coughs> they called me and said i you know I heard you're a breatharian i heard you're a christian as well so they were looking for a christian breatharian you know for american stuff like that so i said yes i am and i said but how do you know how how do i know that uh, you're you're real i said okay there's a way that i can pray with you and you have to just do, activate a few things on the phone so this is the producer uh, wendy i said you do this and you'll see what happens and so she did it exactly she sent me the mail she said kirby it's my birthday it's been 2 weeks i have only been living on coffee and then so i said okay now this is how you change it again which i can teach and she changed that and after she flew me the, the producer jamal avery was the producer for the jersey show the, the yeah the J- jersey show yeah. yeah the jersey show right so he was there and he said kirby he, i mean he was i don't know 100 something pounds like and he said he's a big boy yeah he was a big boy and he said kirby this really works <laughs> i mean i'd love to they did the shoot for me okay and they brought a nutritionist and to check me out so they took me straight By from then the then he had done uh, was it 7 months or 10 months yeah 10 no months no food 10 yeah. months 7 meals uh, uh no food yeah 10 months 7 meals, meals and he had done a half marathon yeah uh during that period yeah. of time and, and then they took me straight from the airport to a doctor because they required a natgeo will fact check so the doctor obviously not fat fact <laughs> yeah fact check Yeah. so the doctor obviously didn't believe so i could see a fake because she was going to be a part of the they program they were scared it was right? too risky so yeah. when they brought me in there and at that point i have to prove i at that time honestly don't know i wanted to eat at 3 months or 4 months mm. but they started delaying the flight and the budgets and all this kind of stuff, as you know in production and i had to stay without eating for longer <laughs> than i w- want and i was like damn if, I, if they take me now and they find out i'm eaten so i had to push another 4 months don't know okay and that was tough okay to be to be an authentic breatharian and i'll tell you that's why it pushed 10 months and as i thought i can get i can start eating again like, like you normally. chose this yeah. it's your fault so that was you're like, like, like is like, the visa like, through yeah is the visa through oh. is the production where is the budget why have you got the budget so anyway you should have asked so stop and restart please <laughs> so so they took me straight in because now this is the 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 main fact check situation doctor b- walked into the room and they check you thoroughly you know with uh, from turn you around uh, everything mm. okay <laughs> that sounds <laughs> they check to see whether uh, this guy I'm going for that check has passed through 
<laughs> has passed stools recently, what was in the stool, all this kind of stuff. And so they, once they did the check on me, you could see her fear. You could see she suddenly got shocked and she, the, the producer said, so now don't you want to be, she said, I don't want to be a part of the show. This man has really not eaten, you know, so at that point of time. So I did mm -hmm. it and then they brought a nutritionist and said, can you do the same thing in, for, for five days for someone else? I said, bring the nutritionist, bring that person in. And in five days, he will cut down at least 50%, at least 50% of his consumption, excess consumption. Excess consumption. I, I have did a curious it. question. Yeah. In seven months, what did you poop? That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that they had to fact check all that. <laughs> but actually, you do you, you do go you do go because you're you know juicing. You, just, you don't pee it out. You have to yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, but you, yeah. I just had to ask. No, yeah. no, no. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a fair it's a fair question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's because a fair I'm question. Like, yeah. Come on, the bond <laughs> vessel is completely closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that has caused me to be able to understand fasting, how to do it, the dynamics of. You need a lab rat, right? I mean, who the heck will do something yeah, true. like that? Seven right? Months. right. So they got a lab rack. Now, when I go to America, most of the people, even on my board, are doctors. Uh, most of the people who are not I won't say most of the people, but a lot of doctors come into my meetings just to understand the dynamics of how it's done and the mystical. This is just mystical stuff, right? So, but it's scientific. But when I say mystical, I don't mean supernatural. I mean it is natural. It's unseen. Right. Well, thank you for being here. I really hope I asked the questions that uh, have been in people's mind and I hope they answered the questions that you had. I really hate to bring people onto a show and intimidate them and like you know question them like it's a police hearing. Yes, yeah. It's not. It's a show. It's yeah. to ask questions and have a conversation. Yes. And I hope we had a conversation yes. and, oh, yeah, we did. and I really hope we covered most of it. Uh, as I said, if any place can create a good person that's all it takes. Uh, Kirby, thank you so much for being so honest and real and yes. you didn't hesitate in me asking anything. Thank, thank you. you for giving me the opportunity to ask those sure, questions. Sure. Uh, it was lovely having you. Yeah. And if you're not, thank you so very much. Thank I really you. do want to continue dropping those two sizes on my side. <laughs> I'm going to try this. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and again, to say, I do not condone, I, I, I'm not promoting that anyone should go fasting without guidance. I fast uh, seasonally now for long periods of time. And I'm at very low calories at the moment, but I love my food. As you know, Daniel, you came home and uh, you, you see how much we enjoy food. So I do enjoy food a lot. I'm on Fiona's side as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> food is a tough part. Yes. So. Uh, anyway, I'm so happy that I was able to have a conversation prior to this shoot because I really wanted to be ready with my questions and also have an understanding about WOW before I sat here. So I did that part and I really hope you, I was able to give you the answers that you have been looking out as well. We will see you another, uh, with another episode to date with Danutil. Then you keep smiling. It's a wrap. Thank you.